Hello and welcome to another episode of, um, well, <laughs> Ride Rescue, formerly known as Ride Revival. Uh, when I first set up my YouTube account, I came up with the name of Ride Revival so I could revive cars like this one that had been sitting in storage for a long time and uh, a couple other projects that I'm currently working on. Soon after I got started, I got a message on one of my videos that said they were Ride Revival and they wanted me to stop using the name. I understand somebody not wanting me to use their name, but their name was Ride Revival and blah 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 blah. I had a short version of it, and when I first did a search checking to see if anybody was using that name, uh, I didn't find it on YouTube. And I understand this guy yeah, reaching out to me saying, hey, we use Ride Revival all the time. We've used it on social media. We've used it on other areas of the internet. So, so I've changed my name. And rather than Revival, I'll go with Rescue. Rescue is still, I'm rescuing old cars. Uh, I can also branch out to rescuing wrecked cars. Uh, if you looked at my first video that I did, which just kind of my history of the last 40 years of, of working on cars. Uh, that's always been what I was after. Uh, rescuing cars from, from the scrap heap, uh, rescuing parts, uh, reusing them on other cars. In the last video of my Skylark, uh, I talked about how I had put in air ride suspension and changed the tires and wheels, and the air ride suspension pretty much has destroyed the car. Um, by having all the flex and tweak of a convertible, uh, even with a full frame, it broke all the rust loose inside the car, uh, in the body, in the floor, in the fenders, and to the point where I started <laughs> leaking gasoline and was running the risk of losing the brakes. So I decided I was going to have to just take the body off and completely restore it. So after getting into a deep evaluation of the car, it, it's definitely restorable. It, the car's not a total loss. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> There's a lot of panels that are going to have to be replaced uh, and repaired, uh, a lot of welding, and a lot of seams that are going to have to be redone, but it is all repairable. Um, it, it, interesting too is the last day I drove the car when I decided, okay, it's time to pull the body off, I'm driving the car home. As I'm pulling in the driveway, the rear end is just screaming and howling. I've got a bearing that has gone out. So there's just one thing after another. That, this car needs some serious attention. So we're going to address that. So before I pulled the body off of the frame, I decided to take the time to redo the quarter panels and massage things so that the tires, when the car was lowered all the way down, wouldn't rub on anything inside the fender wells. It was rubbing a little on the inside, a little on the outside. But by just making some slight changes before I pulled the body off, I could open up those wheel wells so that when the car was setting all the way down on the bump stops, they would have free movement. So, took all the air out of the bags, jacked the rear end up, and then just kept moving the tire back and forth until I had everything cleared inside of that wheel well. I just put a jack and some blocks up inside and just pushed it out. So the inner fender was able to push in just slightly, the outer fender I was able to flare just slightly, and I was able to get good clearance. There was a little bit of sloppiness in the rear end that going through turns, the the rear end could slop and rub and what that was is the bushings all the bushings in the rear end in the four link suspension were a little bit loose so by taking out all those rubber bushings and replacing them with the polyurethane bushing i was sure that i could just really tighten up that rear end so while i was working on the quarter panels to to make them wide enough for the tires that's where i started breaking loose all the the rust there was little bubbles around the, the fender well lip uh, but naturally as you start chipping out those bubbles uh, You're probably going to find a lot more rust in the front of the the fender well lip on the Passenger side of the car those bubbles where I chipped it all out um, It was rusted out both the inner fender and the outer fender So that was two layers of metal that was going to have to be reworked as you get around to the back side of the quarter panel and where the drop-off is to the trunk That was all rusted as well. The drop-off panel had some rust in it that was a fairly easy fix, or could be an easy fix. Uh, as well as the outer skin, all of that area from the bumper all the way to the fender well lip was also rusted. Bad enough that that all 
had to be cut away, and you can see that in the, in the photo where it's all exposed. With some handyman tools <laughs> and some sheet metal, you could remake all those pieces. But when there's that much metal missing, it's much easier to do a quarter and an inner fender that's already together that was original OEM material. So I went on the hunt for a quarter panel. <laughs> I searched and searched for rear quarter panels. They were very difficult to come by. When I did find one, they were very expensive. A lot of them still had rust holes that needed to be repaired. So I was hoping to find something out of Arizona or Texas where they didn't have a whole lot of rust. So one day I was browsing looking for parts and I was looking at some, some Pontiac parts and there was a 64, 65 Skylark four-door that was sitting in the Pontiac lot. So I contacted them and said, hey, by chance you still have that Buick and if you do, do you have the quarter panels on it? And they did. And the quarter panels were solid, no rust whatsoever. After really looking closely at my car, the driver's side quarter panel didn't appear to have any rust, but it had a lot of filler. So I ground all that filler out and the, the, the panel was just so bent and twisted, it was just going to be too difficult to repair. Very little rust, there was some rust in it that was pretty easy to fix, but that wheel well lip was so mangled, I decided to go ahead and replace both rear quarter panels. So in these pictures you can see, uh, once I started cutting away all the rust areas, uh, the inner fender well lip, especially at the front rocker, um, there were some holes there where there was some rust, but most of that's just flat metal, was just contoured to fit. Um, there was lap areas where it was spot welded um, to the, the belly pan of the car. Those were all fairly easy once I had them exposed to just hand cut some little pieces of metal. Uh, I butt welded them up in and then was able to overlap the pieces like it would be from the factory so it looked OEM original. And then I drilled holes in it and spot welded it so that it looked like it was a spot weld where I just had a fillet weld in it. So those worked out really good. It was fairly easy. The rocker panels were, were very solid in the back end of the, the car. And then as I got around to the, the tail end of the quarters, on both sides. Those had a little bit of rust in them. Um, the quarter panels that I got out of Arizona had the inner fenders still attached. So that where that fender well lip on the inside where the two outer quarter and the inner quarters came together, um, I cut away up above a couple inches above on that inner fender well so that I have a good surface there where I could lap weld the two together. And after I started playing around with the lap weld, I get carried away and I knew this car had the potential to be a show car and depending on how much time I spent on really doing a great weld, I wanted it to be able to be something where a judge could look it over and not see the welds. Lap welds are really difficult to hide. Uh, yeah, it's on the inside of a fender weld, but there's potential rubbing your hand in there you could fill it. Now, yeah, you could put filler over it and cover up those laps. But by just taking a little extra time and really working all those edges where the metal comes together and making a nice perfect butt weld, um, then you have just enough of a gap and you fill it with metal and you grind it down and it took the extra time to do a really nice butt weld, grind all the welds smooth, sprayed over it with a uh, undercoating like the car originally had and it was all hidden. Nobody would ever know that it had been done. And then at the bottom of the quarter panels along the bottom seam, that from the factory, they put the spot welds really close together and they got them really hot. So the bottom of that is just really, really rough. And if I smoothed all that out, a really keen eye from a judge would know that's not supposed to be smooth. It's supposed to be rough. So I wanted to have that look too. So by using the original quarter panel and the drop off panel from the trunk, underneath that lip, it had all of those spot welds exposed when you looked underneath and you could still see it. So that was just another really good indicator of a high-end show car. Where the quarter panel new section butted up against the, the car, I wanted to bring that all the way up to the top edge as high as I could because inside of the trunk you'd be able to see if it was right in the middle of the panel if I did a, a butt weld or a lap weld along there. If I didn't do a really good job covering that and filling it. 
So by going to the top of the quarter panel, I could do a lap weld along that seam where doing a, a crimp and a lap weld would actually stiffen up that upper edge and I could weld on it without having to worry too much about any warpage from the heat. So you can see in this picture where I cut away all the way to the top. I had planned everything out. I had made a ton of measurements. I put a, a template over the a new quarter panel and I put a template over the car and I, I cut it so there was about a half of an inch overlap along the top. I knew everything was going to be perfect. Everything was going to line up. One thing I didn't check was where the trim, the, the belt line trim along the car on the four door, for some reason, that dove down to the back bumper. And on the convertible, they kept that long straight line for that long straight car. So it wasn't much, it was only about a half an inch, maybe even less, right at the back bumper where that dove down on, on the four door fender. It didn't work, it, it would look horrible, so yeah. Both sides I could have done it the same way, but if I were going to put the trim back on it wouldn't work. And again, I'm after an OEM show car look, so I end up really hacking up that quarter panel on the passenger side. Luckily I was really careful cutting the original quarter off so I could take that top section of the car and put it back on. Uh, so you can see I've got a lot of welding on this rear fender. Uh, so a lot of hours. I end up with over 40 hours just on this one fender alone to make it perfect. Uh, I welded a piece of channel on the inside of the car on the inner trunk area so that I could keep it straight because that body line was so slight along there as I started welding it even though I was spreading out my stitch welds it was starting to move. So by putting a piece of, of channel along the inside of that quarter panel and shaping it to the body line of the car then I'm able to to weld along that area and it held it fairly flat it was pretty successful I didn't have to do a whole lot of straightening to get all those big panels back flat again so now that I have a seam inside of the trunk that you can see just below the belt line of the car uh, I ended up doing a butt weld all along that area too because if I would have done a lap weld in that area as soon as you open up the trunk you'd be able to see it because there's no panels there's no covers or anything on there so that would have been very noticeable and again I want a really high-end finish where this car doesn't look like it's ever had quarter panel work done so by putting a slight gap doing a, a nice bead weld all along there stitching it going back and forth on both sides of the car, making sure it's perfectly straight, all ground down smooth. Once I put just a skim coat of filler on the inside of those fenders, you'd never know anything had ever been done. And even if somebody did know there was quarters, they couldn't tell where it had been welded. So it worked out really good. Once I uh, had the quarters down and I was fitting up the back bumper to make sure everything fit right, I started getting the idea that well, I, I want to clean up the edges of the factory bumper lines and at the tail light section just underneath the tail lights where the body panels had originally come together from the factory they're just horrible body lines. Every 64 and 65 Skylark that I have looked at the tail panel just above the bumper is all wavy and it's just misshaped. Some of them have a fairly crisp line some of them are more rounded. Some of the tail panel is high with tight trunk. Some of them are low with a sloppy loose trunk that you can actually stick your fingers in. Mine was one of those. It was sloppy along the bottom. It had a huge gap along the top. I could stick my fingers into the trunk. You could get your fingers underneath there and easily pry the trunk open. It was just a horrible fit. It was that way from the factory. So I wanted to clean all that up. So where the, the bumper fit to the body, it stuck out just slightly out of both sides of the car. And at the back end of the car, right in the middle, in the center above the license plate bracket, that was in a little bit. And I had a, a couple of different bumpers to work with. Well, both of them were the same shape. So what my thinking was is that since it does have a slight V shape to the back bumper, if I was to pull that out, and exaggerated just a little bit, 
I could make the tail end of the car look better by not having that under the trim that would actually be out beyond it, but it also pulled the corners in and by pulling in the corners, they were perfectly aligned and smooth with the body. My gears are going, I'm thinking, you know, I could tuck this bumper right against the body. I want it to look as much factory original as I can, but now I'm starting to think, hey, I can do some body mods to this car and improve it. I can do better than what Gen GM did and what GM should have done. So I started massaging the rear bumper and the rear panel to make the bumper fit perfect to the body. I wanted a crisp, perfect line with just a slight eighth of an inch gap between the chrome and the, the painted body. The same thing with the coped area around the back fender where the bumper met the fender. That bumper contour was a perfect fit to the contour of the body of the car. So by Splitting and cutting the rear fender area, I was able to manipulate the body panel so that it was a perfect fit to the bumper and snug that bumper right in just an eighth of an inch away from the painted surface with butt welds and nice clean surfaces and the crisp clean bends and, and lines. I was able to grind all that down and I was getting really excited about some of these body mods. So now I'm thinking instead of taking this car back to original, I've done a lot of cards over the years, and I've always done a full original, all that look to be factory original. I've never done a modified car, a custom car, and I'm excited to do this one. Uh, this, it's a Skylark. That's not a high dollar Grand Sport or GTO or anything that way. I'm not going to hurt the value of this car. If anything, I can really up the value of this car. I can give it some look and feel that nothing else out there has when it comes to a, a lower end, just typical Skylark car. So I, I'm getting really excited about some of the body mods. So I'm looking at the taillights and the taillights on all the 64 Skylarks are crooked. So by cutting those all the way out, since I'd already cut out the bottom line underneath the taillight to get that crisp, perfect fit on the bumper, now all they gotta do is finish cutting around the sides of it. So I cut around that blue area where the trim was, so you can see the blue paint that was underneath that trim. I'm able to drop that tail light down and make it perfectly straight and weld it back in again. And then the horseshoe around that tail light, it was also a little bit crooked. It wasn't as crooked as the tail light, so between the two of them, it just looked horrible. And the look across the back of that car, that trim, that did the horseshoe, it, it was straight and then it came up and around and it didn't fit along the bottom and you could see paint underneath the trim on the corners but you couldn't see it along the middle of the bumper. So all that area I wanted to clean up. So welded over all the holes, redrilled all the holes, reshaped all those trim panels, reshaped the tail lights, and then everything was just exactly the way it, I think it should have been coming from the factory. Top quality, real smooth lines, real tight gaps. On the uh, driver's side of the car, uh, uh, the white fender that's left, you can see a bunch of markings. <laughs> I, I started just making little notes and comments on how far I was going to have to move the, the shape of that rear bumper on the quarter panel. For some reason on the, the driver's side of the car, I was really struggling to get all of that to come together and look right. But when you're modifying a car, you just start cutting away. So that's what I did. I made all those marks on it with the magic marker. Um, I, I cut, trimmed, opened it up, welded it all back together and was able to get that side to match up to the other side so, so that there was some good balance and precision between both sides of the car. So you walked around each side of the car both of them look the same. So now that I've got the tail end of the car exactly the way I want it, and I'm starting to do some body mods that are pretty exciting, now I'm ready to take the body off of the chassis. Before I take the body off the chassis, I wanna make sure I don't break the car in half because it's getting, getting pretty loose from the tail end of the front end of the car right through the middle of the belly. I had the doors on and I made sure my gaps were perfect on the doors and then I welded in a cross brace inside of the car took the doors off, 
and then from the latch bolt where the door closed against the latch and the hinges I put a bar across that that area where I could bolt to the hinge plate and bolt to the latch plate and make sure that gap would not change for the doors that's a critical gap if that cowl moves at all even if I just change the hinges so that the door fits now the fender might not fit up against the cowl so so that's a critical dimension I wanted to make sure. So before I pull the body off, I've got everything back assembled. I've got the front fenders on, I've got the doors on. I can check all my gaps, I can check all the alignments, I check the mounting points of all the frame, and I get this body perfect on that frame. Then, like I say, I built a cross section, I put in my braces from the hinges to the, to the strike plates, completely blow the car apart, and off comes the body rolled out the chassis and before I start getting into all the rust repair and the work I'm going to be doing on the body I want to clean up the frame so um, the the rear end needs some work it needs bearings um, I want to uh, change the gear ratio in the rear end I want to change the transmission I'm planning on putting in an overdrive transmission it originally has a switch pitch two-speed transmission off the line it's really slow and you get up on the freeway since it doesn't have an overdrive it had to have a pretty good gear in the back end so that you can keep freeway speeds so I want to change all that so I'll be changing out the gears did some calculations and decided on doing a 390 gear in the rear end that way it'll get a good jump off the line and then my overdrive will then take over where the 390 gears would would have started to, to give out on freeway speeds so I'm excited about those changes uh, it does have a pause attraction rear end in it so I'll go through and make sure that that is all tight and not sloppy or worn uh, don't know how many miles the car has on it the speedometer wasn't working when I got it um, it showed 46,000 miles but there's no way <laughs> the car had original 46,000 miles so in the next video I will take you through doing the actual chassis I decided once I started really looking over the chassis I wanted to really clean it up and make it nice this is going to be a show car now so there was a lot of things about the chassis I wanted to change. There was a lot of exposed holes that you could see that I wanted to fill in. Uh, I wanted to put in a higher end polyurethane bushing setup, change it to four wheel disc brakes, uh, change all the lines. I need new brake lines, I need new fuel lines. I wanted to hide all the lines for the air suspension. So I'm gonna get uh, into all of that in the next video. As I mentioned in my previous videos, I plan on keeping you up to date on uh, hours and dollars that I spent on the car. So in the prior videos, I've got a total of $10,250 that I've spent on the car. I have just over 40 hours that I've put into the car. Now with this video, that takes my grand total of 151 hours that I've spent and I've got a total of $800 in quarter panels and that included the shipping. So that puts me at about $11,000 to date in actual cash outlay and at uh, just over 150 hours, uh, at $50 an hour, 100 hours is 5,000 so another 2,500 so that's over seven thousand dollars in in labor and that's just at fifty five dollars an hour so if you're paying shop time at sixty five to eighty five dollars an hour if I had taken this car to a shop uh, the ten thousand dollars I've laid out in cash and another ten thousand dollars in labor minimum uh, you're looking at a twenty thousand dollar car at the time this car was only worth about fifteen thousand dollars so I'm already exceeding the value of the car uh, and I've got a long ways to go <laughs> So uh, I'll keep you up to date <laughs> as I get through these videos on how much money I spent on the car. Thank you for watching Ride Rescue. If you like what I'm doing, give me the thumbs up, leave me a comment, please subscribe. Any way you can help me, I really appreciate it. So thanks again for watching and stay tuned for the next video. TTFN, <laughs> ta-ta for now.